Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment. And today I am doing a video on advanced color theory. If you are interested in color theory, I will link my beginning video and my intermediate color theory videos down below in the description box if you want a refresher or you've missed those. So today I'm going to be talking about color notes and I'm going to be talking a bit about psychology of color. So <laughs> st stay tuned. It's going to get a wild, it's going to be a wild one. Okay. So what are color notes? Color notes just mean that it's a mixture of hue, which is the color, the value, which is how light or dark a color is, and the chroma, which is basically the intensity of the color. So if you want an intense color, it doesn't have any black or white or gray mixed into it. It's very sort of similar to saturation. That's what color note is. It's a mixture of those three things. So when someone refers to that, you can think, oh, okay, we're talking hue, value, chroma. Now, how to do color notes in a piece of art. There are multiple options. Like there's more than one way to bake a cake. There's more than one way to paint a rock. And that may be <laughs> a bit of my examples here. So you want to start with a solid color. Nothing splotchy, no polka dots, no, you know, stripes, nothing like that. So let's say we start with this really nice, muted orange. Now this orange is very close to the gray scale. So the closer you come in from all the colors of their vibrancy, the closer they get to gray in the middle and all of them reach the same color gray, the complete desaturation of the colors. So to add a color note, you want to do a similar variation of value and make sure that when it's laid upon that the edges are very soft and blended out. So a similar value would be something right next to it. Right next to it. These are all on the same line. These are all of similar value. How do I know these are of similar value? If I took a picture of this whole row and desaturated it, if I turned it black and white, they would all be the same color gray. One would not be darker or lighter than the other. These are all the same value. So if I'm drawing a rock and I want to add some color notes and the sun is shining on the side of rock, I could add some of this sort of muted down yellow on top of my muted orange and that would be a color note. I just want to make sure that I blend in the edges so it's not so stark and obvious that I've added little splotches of another color. So what would I do for shading my rock? The sun is shining and you want to have contrast within every illustration you do to make it look professional. So I could shade the part of my rock that's not getting shined on by the sun could be darker. It could be darker but on the same color hue line. That is one way I can add a different color note. I could introduce this color within the shade or I could go across to my complement and I can use this color. This color is also of similar value. I'm introducing a whole new color that complements this color, but it's in the same value range. And now my rock in shadow can be this muted blue color. That would be adding a, another color note. And then within the shadow, I could add some of these muted violets for texture, for, um, so the way you would do color notes are for pretty much the three main ones would be quality of light would be where you would add different color notes, texture of whatever you're painting or drawing, and then atmospheric perspective, which is when you see a painting of layers of trees and the trees in the foreground 
are really dark and as they get farther away of these layers of trees they get lighter and lighter until they fade into the background that's atmospheric perspective and you can add color notes to those so if there is if you're painting hypothetical rows of blue forest trees in the mist and they all are coming up these beautiful dark blues you can have a sunset in the distance or the sun starting to peek out amongst the fog if all your trees are fading into this color you can then start to add color notes of this one because they are similar in value and then they will blend out well together and it will look good so when you see a painting and it looks like somebody added like a weird splash of turquoise as a highlight or like hot pink as a highlight and you're thinking how did they think to highlight that edge or that sort of quality of light on that shoulder that bright color look at the colors next to it are they using really strong hues that have really high chroma and then decided yes i'm going to add a really bright blue to this yellow of this shirt there, there's ways to do it you want to sort of keep with the same intensities so if you are doing digital art it's much easier to desaturate a picture you're working on and then just kind of control z and do that and bring it back to color and see that they're all within the same values but for traditional artists you kind of either want to have a color wheel or start mixing your own colors and start mixing ones that are all muted together. This would be a really great uh, practice project. Take three tubes of paint, take um, a, a titanium white, take a lamp black or one of the blacks you have or one of the whites you have and start muting them all out to be really similar in color and practice adding them on top of each other for color notes. See which ones make good highlights in the sunshine. See which make ones make really good shadows in the shade. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the psychology of color. So this is something I found on drawpaintacademy.com and I'll link to it. But this is a color wheel, and please ignore the stripes, my printer heads are having trouble today, of what people associate with each color. So if you are going to, let's say you're a photographer, let's say that's your specific art. If you're going to photograph a lawyer, you're gonna to wanna to put him in a blue suit and frame that on the wall of, you know, official lawyers for the office because blue is trust, it's power, it's confidence, it's loyalty, it's success. So if you are painting um, a portrait of a bunch of people and you want the person in charge to look like they're a little bit more in charge, you would add a little bit more blue to them because that's what people associate with blue. You look at green, nature, luck, harmony, loyalty, safety. If you are a brand company and you're trying to do, you know, a line of food, you're gonna add a lot of green. You want it to look as natural as possible. You want it to look safe. You want it to be prosperous, health, all the things that people naturally associate with color action, passion, energy, excitement, strength, adventure, red, these sort of warm, excitable colors. When you look at fast food chains, they are all warm colors. Action, optimism, you know, what's this one? Joy, warmth. These are all excitable, warm colors that make you eat more. <laughs> So a lot of fast food chains employ that. They don't want you feeling relaxed. They don't want you, you know, sort of calming down. They want, they want it fast. They want you excited. They want joy. They want you in and out of all these things. So when you go to apply this to your piece of art and you're like, okay, I've learned that this red is a cool red. This red is a warm red. Warm, warm comes forth. You know, cool colors recede. 
I want to paint a picture that's, you know, for a gift for someone that's feminine, it's soft, you could add more pinks. And then you're like, okay, I'm adding the pinks. I have warm pinks of this um, flowers coming forth and the pink vase is cool, so it's sort of receding, so we know the flowers are more important. It's the largest thing, it's in the center of the painting. Here is the pink I'm using. Maybe there's some shadow within there and you look towards color notes for the stems and the leaves and the shadows of the greenery of these pink florals to figure out the best green color note for that pink. Color theory. It all comes together once you start combining all these different ideas and you realize how thoughtful and how specific artists are when they place a color, when they choose a color, when they place where they place it on their canvas, what they choose to highlight it with, what color they choose to texture it with, the warms and the cools, everything all together. I hope this helped. Next Tuesday, I'm going to show you a binder of what I've kept from a color theory class I took in college over a decade ago. So what was worth saving from doing color theory in college. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Bye.